we, as I mentioned, there are two, the, we will have the baptism of Johan and Joshua, who would like to honor the Lord in the waters of baptism. So I would like to request them to come forward one after the other, Johan and then Joshua, to share their testimony and uh, what, why, uh, what, what God has led them to take the ste step. Also, after that, Mr. Newton would like to share uh, a word uh, from his experience about God's faithfulness. And after that, uh, Dr. DJ Christopher will please come forward and pray especially for these baptismal candidates. Good morning, church. Um, I'd like to share a little about my faith uh, and about my new life in Christ and my growth in Christ as well. So um, uh, I accepted Jesus a while back, but I hesitated and I didn't want to take baptism. I kept postponing it um, because of several reasons. Uh, I had a few misconceptions about baptism and I also um, <laughs> I was quite nervous to come on stage. <laughs> and uh, and recently, especially last month, I was living with a, a bunch of people, and uh, through them, I learned uh, a lot. I learned what it is to grow in Christ and to be in a relationship with Christ. And um, I've been learning a lot, especially re in recent times, through His Word and through many uh, people as well. And uh, I realize how sinful and broken we are as people, and how much we need Jesus. And how much we need to depend on him. It is not because of anything that we do that we are saved, but because of God, uh, because of Jesus. And I'd like to share my testimony now. So um, I was born in a good Christian family with good Christian parents. And uh, since a very small age, I learned the word. I learned uh, what it is to be a Christian. But personally, I never really knew uh, God. I never really knew Jesus. I, uh, but I would... In, with my friends and all, I had a, with most friends, I had a good name, and I lived a double life. I didn't really um, know Jesus personally, and um, I was put in a hostel at around when I was uh, five years old, and many experiences, uh, through many experiences, I did go to Christ, but I didn't stay in it. Whenever I needed Christ, I'd go, and I'd, like, oh, after that, I'd fall back into my old life. And this kept happening. I'd go to various meetings and camps, and uh, every time in the end during the altar call, I'll, I'll put my hand uh, up or I'll go forward, and the very next day I'd go back to the same life. And I understand now that all this happened because uh, I came to Christ only because of emotional reasons, and it wasn't rooted on love or uh, anything. So because of this, uh, I wasn't able to stay strong in the faith. and. Uh, one similar camp uh, was, I don't really remember much about it, but on this camp I uh, did go, f I, I didn't go forward because I thought, I thought to myself if I'll go forward and the very next day I'll go back, so I'm just going to sit here. And uh, that night, I was, as I was in, a, in my bed, I uh, remember praying. I said, I don't want, I said, God, I don't want to live this empty, uh, meaningless life. I don't find any purpose. And I asked God, uh, to come into my life, I confessed and I repented all my sins. And I, I know that all of us, most of us um, know what it feels to, fe to feel broken, to feel empty. And we try various ways to f uh, fill this emptiness that we have in our hearts. But the only way uh, is Jesus. And uh, I prayed, I confessed, I repented. And that day I felt peace that I've never felt before and joy. and. Uh, since then, I've been uh, learning a lot. There have been ups and downs, but uh, through it all, uh, Jesus has been with me. He's been teaching me, and I've been growing. Um, and uh, I asked the church to pray for me and to hold me accountable in this journey that I walk. Uh, thank you. Good morning, church. I'm Joshua Emmanuel, and I'm here to tell you what God has done for me in my life and why I've chosen to take this step of baptism. 
uh, growing up in a Christian family, I've always been taught everything there is to know about the Bible, all the stories, memorized all the verses, but I've never really had a close relationship with Christ. I knew God, I knew the attributes of God, but I didn't know him as my personal savior. Very often, growing up, I used to participate in these Bible quizzes and all these memory verse competitions, just so that like, at the end of the day, my parents would leave me alone. This, uh, this separation from God was completely intentional, and I think it was just rebellious me, and uh, it became worse during my middle school, and often I would come to church, open my Bible for Sunday class, and then promptly pack it back in that bag, it would take it next week. Uh, so throughout my 5th to 8th standard, I ended up as an arrogant, rebellious, short-tempered, and self-censored child. Um, I know that very often I've broken my parents' heart, and I used to come home every day at very late. When my parents told me that I was late, I used to get frustrated, irritated, then throw a temper tantrum. And the classical day, used to, I used to just uh, slam the door at their faces which looking back I feel has really, uh, uh, I have not done what my parents have taught me to do. Um, I remember there are so many days I've come back and just hidden my exam papers so I'll be left for this week and next week I'll get that, that week's worth of scoldings. Uh, but through this I knew my parents loved me, I knew they prayed for me and um, I know that Amma especially used to go for forms and prayers every week just, just to pray for me. Uh, I used to see that in those forms where you could fill out your child's name, she used to fill out my name. And somewhere along the way, God, has, God changed me and became a, made me a more pleasant human being. I received Jesus as my personal savior in my ninth standard uh, in a camp called Summer Tree when uh, after a message that Ashok uncle had given and after he gave the uh, altar call, I gave my life to Christ. There was no dramatic change, there was no uh, me suddenly becoming holy boy and uh, I didn't, I, I was still continuing to sin about that, after that. But uh, I, I knew that I had to take the step of baptism but for the same reasons that Johan said, I was scared that I would sin after my baptism and I was scared of giving the speech. Uh, I didn't take my baptism. Um, after 10th and 11th standard, my relationship with Christ just used to wax and wane. It always used to be this up and low, never constant. But I knew that he had prote protected me from so many things, and e even though I didn't know it. Some of the things which so many of you may know that I struggled with, like my Tamil and a lot of my studies as well, has made, him, made me trust him so much more and I'm so grateful for that. When the lockdown started, my concerns about studies and college and entrances also used to grow. There are so many nights that I would end up uh, just trying to work out each permutation, combination, each neat mark and each ra neat rank that I would need to get into a college that I like. And I, uh, looking back, this was completely futile and uh, I was fighting a battle that I didn't need to. In this time, God taught me to leave things into his hand and I grew a lot closer to him through this. I spent a lot of time learning about him and having a personal relationship with him. And at the end of this, I was considering baptism after my exams. Uh, through the exams, the COVID and all the little concerns about life that uh, a typical teenager like me would have, he has given me exactly what is good just what I need and only what I can handle and protected me from so much else and I'm so happy for that. I th often think that God stopped the entire world just for me and therefore I have ta uh, chosen to take the step of baptism. Uh, the reasons why I want to do so is because I want to publicly confess my faith with Christ, the relationship that I have with him and I do not want to bel belittle or be ashamed of what he has done for me on the cross by dying and forgiving me of all my sins. Uh, two, because the Bible makes it very clear that this baptism and immersion is a step of obedience that every believer has to take after salvation. It is symbolic of what happened to my faith 
where I, I died and now I am risen with Christ. I want to commit myself to be a witness for Christ and be a living sacrifice for him. I have understood that my commitment to Christ does not depend on what I have done or whatever I will do, but on what he has done. Although I must be wary of sin, I know that he has already conquered sin and will protect me from the same. I want to remind myself to whom I truly belong to and through all the wickedness and sin that surrounds me in my college and at, in the world as a whole, I want to hold fast to him. So to conclude, I'm sure of what my Lord has done for me by dying on the cross in my stead. And I'm also sure of what would have happened if he didn't. And I want to rep uh, remain eternally faithful for him. And I pray that you will uphold me in your prayers and that I will be a good witness and follow him unashamedly and with complete obedience. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy about Johan and Joshua. May God help them to stand firm till the end and help many people to come to know uh, in personal relationship with Christ. I'm standing here as Johan's father today. I'm standing here with a lot of emotions and the emotion which is on the top is gratefulness. I, uh, Johan is going to USA to study. Uh, many times I had a lot of uh, doubts whether to share this because I always think that sharing uh, our spiritual growth, our spiritual change as a testimony is, is very important and other things are not much important. But then I realized that uh, this will help all of us as a big family to thank God and rejoice. And also, I see a lot of young people sitting here so that you can uh, think about my life when I was a young boy and you can thank God. I was a young boy when God called me to be a missionary and I obeyed God and I went as a missionary to Andamans. And when I was going as a missionary, many people discouraged me. Many people told me that um, uh, missionary life is not easy. And especially for your future, for your family, you may not get a, a bride. You may not, uh, your children, your family will suffer like that. One person told me like this, Newton, you can suffer. Uh, but you cannot see your loved one suffer. You cannot see your children suffer. So don't go as a missionary. This is what many people told me. And my wife uh, did a BSc nursing in uh, CMC. Then she worked uh, three years. She was a, a ward sister in, a in the maternity ward those days. Then she, even before that, she called her to be a missionary. So she also, uh, we both went as missionaries to Andamans. And uh, our son was born. And within, a one, within one month, we had to rush to CMC. He was a preterm baby, baby, and he had to undergo surgery. I still remember that then General Secretary of the organization which I worked uh, prayed. Uh, he prayed, Lord, we don't understand. We believe that children are a gift, but we don't know what type of gift it is. Because uh, um, seeing our baby going through a surgery when he's one year, one month old, it's not an easy thing. Uh, then, we also had a lot of other things about uh, other plans. One of the things we, I and my wife heard is we will never send our children to hostels, especially for missionary hostels, where missionary children study. Um, we knew Santosha Vidyalaya, I knew very well. And um, um, when we were here in Vellur for the surgery, when Joan was one month old, um, we had to go to Bala Nilayam for a colleague's uh, daughter's uh, admission. So that time we saw Bala Nilayam and we were very strong that we will never send our children to our hostel. We will keep them with us. And I read uh, the biography of Jessiman Brand and Evelyn Brand, the parents of Paul Brand. And uh, they kept their children up to nine years with them. They had homeschooling, then only they sent them to their um, send their children to their home country. So I had all these things we will never send, like other missionary parents, hard-hearted parents, uh, sending their children when they are very small. And we went to Andamans. Uh, after the surgery, we went back, and uh, um, 
we tried our best to give him homeschooling and we couldn't teach him anything and we arranged one uh, hindi teacher she came he is uh, she was uh, uh, young phil in hindi and she came to our house and our house is a bamboo thatched wall house so uh, my wife and i were standing outside and uh, johan uh, maybe four year old i think he was telling um, uh, why you are coming to our house he was telling in hindi uh, without respect tum kyun hum log ka ghar aati hum log tamil hai hum hindi nahi sikhega and uh, we also tried our best he didn't study anything uh, at the age of 5 he could make only he could draw capital a we couldn't do any other thing and god broke us god spoke to my wife through the life of hannah as uh, she sent samuel to um, the temple uh, god spoke to her and god spoke to me and uh, we sent him when he was 5 year old to santosh vidyalaya Uh, to make it short he he studied in four different schools three, three different syllabi and uh, he finished with very ordinary marks in 12th standard and uh, we thought somehow if he passes neat we can try for some foreign countries like philippines or ukraine and then he uh, made it to neat and uh, when he was in 12th standard he had a acl injury and he had to undergo surgery and uh, he did only 2 months of online coaching for neat and he get he got through neat and we studied a lot and found that ukraine is the best and we did our everything and the admission letter came to us and he was supposed to go to ukraine and uh, the financial support we we expected stopped so he couldn't go to neat uh, he couldn't go to ukraine that was god's plan then one of our friends one day called johan and said if uh, would you like to study in my college we told uh, in america we told even if they give 90% scholarship we cannot afford and they gave 100% scholarship that friend's father who is a pastor said that he will take care of the hostel expenses and now he will be going next week uh, august 1st he is going and uh, many times we made mistakes we were unfaithful to god but we also obeyed god in some things and we depended on god for many things and many times our only dependence was on god and we never planned for our children's future but god planned everything in a way that he is able to go now i stand here as a missionary that god has taken care of all of our things so far and especially in the life of our son's education and i i, I share this as a challenge to everybody who are standing here when we give our lives to god he takes care of us and i am also not standing here to tell that going to america is the greatest thing our studies even our studies is not a great thing god knows everything we expected that we will enjoy everything in heaven but god in his sovereign will has given lot of uh, times to praise him thank him and rejoice and i rejoice uh, and i thank god and i pray that you please pray for johan and also we have one more son jeremy uh please pray that our family will be a witness to god in everything thank you uh, brothers and sisters uh, we have come to together to celebrate an important occasion in the lives of two young men so it's our duty to pray and commit them to god shall we bow our heads and pray lord our heavenly father you commanded go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and of the holy spirit teaching them to observe all that i have commanded you and behold i am with you always to the end of the age today joshua and johan have come forward to declare to this world their faith in you and the salvation you have graciously given to them through this step of obedience in baptism a heart was warmed by their testimony 
Lord, it's a living testimony to us and the world of a real change that has taken place in their lives. We are all witnesses to this declaration. We rejoice with them and say Amen. We pray for these dear children as they take this important step of baptism. May they walk forward, cleansed of sin, embraced and loved by the Father. May they follow the leading of the Lord Jesus Christ, guiding their paths. May they walk their faith, pouring out your hope and redemption into this broken world. Lord, we pray that they may face the challenges, temptations, adversaries and difficulties in life. But you, O oh Lord, remember their faith and their dedication and this declaration of their allegiance to you and stand by them in their most difficult times. We pray, Lord, that you will guide them in the many decisions they have to make in their lives and ensure that they are godly and not worldly decisions. Our Lord and ever-loving Father, when Christ was baptized in River Jordan, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. Lord, we pray that you may grant this blessing to your children, that their lives may be filled with the power and the fruit that comes from him. We pray that the Holy Spirit in them will equip them to live a life holy and nudge them when they go wrong. We pray for their family, their mentors, those that have contributed to their nurture. We pray that you may bless these people by your mercy and enable them to be renewed in their efforts to build your kingdom upon this earth. As a church, we bless them in one accord. And in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.